Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens. And as you may well know, and if you watch this channel long enough and followed my posts, Combat Commander Europe is my favorite game of all time. It's the best, in my opinion, tactical World War II game uh, there is available, designed by the late, great Chad Jensen. Um, one of the laments that people used to have about it, or still have about it, is how do you, you can't play it solo. Because you got you got hands of cards, and there's really no way to play it solo, uh, not easily. Well, many of us who really like the game have easily played it two-handed solo through various minor alterations to the rules. Um, basically, just being able to um, you know keep the hand of cards as secret as possible, what your opponent has. Don't look at the don't look at the other side's cards while you're playing one side, kind of thing like that. But uh, but that's all a thing of the past. Um, a user, James Watton UK, over on Board Game Gulag, or as you know, Board Game Geek, is, um, has created a solo variant. He's called it the CC Bot. Um, it's in its third edition now. I've played, I played a couple of uh, different versions of it. Um, but the third one, the one that's out now, is pretty darn solid. I really like it a lot. Um, I just finished one game um, where I was the Polish forces and against the Germans and had it play the AI and it beat me. I mean, I uh, had some misfortune of some some rapid uh, time triggers that happened um, like in, in rapid succession. There's only six turns in the game um, and I had two on a, um, let's see, it was a recover. I played a recover to try to recover a couple of my guys. Got one time trigger on one, uh, so he didn't recover. Uh, I had to shuffle up, and the next guy got a time trigger again on the first card. I don't know how I did that. I don't know how I shuffled it like that. I, sh I shuffled pretty well, just, just the way it happened. And so I ended up with two rapid time triggers, you know, in the same action, it was ludicrous. But uh, uh, but anyway, anyway, the AI played pretty flawlessly. So I'm just gonna, what I want to show you here is I'm not going to play a game with it right now. I'm setting up for a game, but I did want to take a moment to show you how to set it up and in general how it works. Um, so if you have any questions about it, you, you know this this may help you you figure it out. Um, but it's it's. It's really pretty ingenious. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed at how it's uh, evolved from the beginning. Um, like I said, I played the, uh, I, I think I played a little bit of all the versions. Um, and this one just is really now streamlined. It, originally you had to have different boards for each uh, nationality and now it's uh, kind of universal. You can play any side. Um, you can choose to be the attacker, the defender, the, you know, you can choose to be Axis allies, whatever. Um, and it, it pretty much has been refined uh, to accommodate all those situations and feel like you're playing a real player. Now, I will say one thing, you do still have to, it, it determines what the card is, what the order is going to be, um, and it will also determine if you have any additional actions that the, that the AI is going to play. Um, but you do have to still make some decisions for which unit to activate, but any any war gamer who's played both sides themselves, that's the easy part. I mean, taking the best action. The problem with Combat Commander is uh, you know what the cards are, so you know, hey, I can move here freely because uh, he can't take a opportunity fire at me because I know he doesn't have a fire card. Well, you don't know that anymore. You now have no idea what's gonna happen because he could, he could manage to pull off a, a, a opportunity fire options. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. So when you download it, it consists of uh, one sheet of rules, front and back. And I think these are done on A4 since he's, uh, he's from the UK. Um, I just printed him on a normal letter and it printed just fine. Um, this does spell out how it works. I think he's admitted himself. He's not a he's not a rules 
uh, documentation writer. So these could definitely use some cleaning up and I may take a crack at, uh, at refining them now that I've, I've figured it out how to play it. Um, but anyway, very simple. One sheet of rules. Most, for the most part, the game doesn't change. Um, the main thing that will change is all the objectives in the game uh, do become open objectives. So you, everybody knows what they are. Everybody meaning you and the AI who knows nothing, but uh, the objectives are all open. Um, in the last game I played, I had several objectives get added through events. It's like, oh, wow, you know. It ended up that uh, that's what gave the uh, AI the win, is I'd forgotten to give give them the points immediately because they had already secured a couple objectives that then popped into play and the sudden death roll failed um, but ended up having the AI had the initiative card so I felt it was then the best since it had the lead uh, by four points if it tried again for the initiative you know to try to try to get the sudden death roll again and it did and it won at the end of the game so i was like oh man you know but i think that's something a real player would do if they had the points i think they would have used the initiative card to try it so you still try to play the best of your ability but you don't have to pick what the cards are you don't have to pick the actions um so this basically covers the setup and then how you're going to use uh use the cards and i'll kind of go over those here uh as we go so this is one sheet you'll download. This is a PDF. And then you also have these two cards, and I've laminated them uh, and cut them down to size. But these two cards are the one you use. This is the AI track, and we'll cover that in a second. And then this is uh, some triggers that help you determine if the AI gets to play some extra action cards from his hand, like you would if you were playing an assault, uh, or excuse me, an advance. You might want to use an assault card, so on and so forth. So this gets, gives him a chance to do that as well. So we'll go over that in a minute. And it seems to have most uh, most of them covered and it's a really, really elegant system. So so this is the CC bot. He's Rising Sun Studios. And like I said, his, his BGG username is James Watton, W-A-T-T-O-N UK. Uh, you can find this in the Combat Commander Europe uh, forums. I believe it may work with uh, Pacific. I know it'll work with all the factions in Combat Commander Europe and all the expansions, but it may actually work with Pacific, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So, um, and what you have here is you've got five different tracks. You've got an artillery track, uh, basic drills, support, assault, and hold and defend. Then you got this action track down the side, which helps it determine if it gets to take, play one of these additional action cards with its turn. And then the orders check track, which helps you determine uh, if it's got a card that it can use for the current turn. So when you initially set this up, put it right here. First thing you look at is the uh, posture that the AI side is playing. Now the one I'm setting up, I am going to try this with scenario um, 40, which is called Into the Breach. It's from the Stalingrad um, expansion pack, battle pack. And <laughs> it's got a ton. I've never seen this many counters on a uh, combat commander map. I've not played, obviously, every scenario, but uh, this has got a ton. And the thing I liked about it was in this case, it had a random setup with all these units and you can see them there. It's a lot. So anyway, it was a, it was a very cool system. That was a, this is a scenario that actually was designed by Chad Jensen. And um, uh, I'm looking forward to playing it and see how the AI holds up with that many. So in this scenario, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be the Russians. The Russians are on defense and uh, mainly because the allies were, since the last scenario I played, the allies were defending and I was attacking, flipped the script and I'll play the Russians and uh, be, on the, be on the defense of, of a factory while the uh, Axis are trying to take us over or um, outnumber us in the main factory. They outnumber us and it's instantly over. The game's instantly over. So to that, uh, you look at the posture of the side that you've decided to be the allies, I mean, you decided to be the AI. In this case, the Axis is gonna be the AI and the Axis is on attack. So I've taken these uh, coin, 
These are some cardboard markers I got from uh, another game. I think they were money in another game that I didn't keep. And what you do is you follow this track here and it tells you, okay, if he's in setup mode, then you're gonna do place one, 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 two, one. You see they always total up to six. So what that means is these five tracks, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, you're going to place, and I've, like I said, I got these tokens here. So you're gonna place one to the side, two, three, and then the fourth track gets two tokens, so four and five and six. So you just start laying them down in order and you lay them to the side because we're gonna lay out their start, put them in their starting position in a minute and that's done randomly too, which is very, very cool. All right, so you can see if it's on recon, it's gonna give more to um, uh, the, basic, the basic drills track. If it's on defense, it's gonna be more on the hold and defend track. So that's it's pretty ingenious how it works. So this is very similar to if you played the solo bot in Anachrony. The Anachrony board um, does have these different tracks and they move around and they take different actions very intelligently uh, and prioritize. And so that's what he modeled it after. Obviously it's, it's its own unique thing. So there's two other things you need. So you got these, you're gonna need two markers. One to go on this track and one to go on this track. We'll get to that in a minute. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need the fate deck for the side you're playing. So this is the German Fate deck. I've already got it shuffled. And then you need a second unused faction deck. In this case, I took the uh, Italy deck. It's a, you need a full size one. You can't use the partisans or anything like that. To start, what you're gonna do is you're going to, for each of these tokens, we're gonna draw uh, one card from the deck and the white die is gonna tell us how many spaces to, to prime this at, to start it. So. This one comes up and it is a one. So this one will go in the first space, which is an artillery request. And that's where he'll, that'll start. Discard that and we'll draw another one. It's also a one. So there we go. And the third token is a two. So we'll put him on the two space. So the, this was a move and this was a recover option. And then these two are going to move four first, and four is going to start six spaces in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now number five is going to start two spaces in. And that's on a move, and the four was on an advance. And then finally number six is going to go three spaces in. One, two, three, and that's a fire. So you also note that some of these um, positions colored and some are just plain white so the ones that are shaded in here they're going to be uh, you check um, so this is a regular move and this is a move that's potentially got an action to it so that's one criteria that will cause you to do a check here on the action sheet uh, and then these other triggers may cause you to check for an action as well such as the uh, opponent plays a fire order and you're the opponent to the AI so or you play a move or advance or a move uh, and what's interesting in this case there's two for they play a move and so you actually check both of these so if I play a move then if they're the defender then they have a chance at doing hidden moves or uh, hidden wire hidden mines or hidden wire um, but only if there's a scenario defender so if if that doesn't happen, there's no point in checking this. In this case, he's not the defender. He's an attacker. So, But with the playing a move order, then you have a chance. To, if I play a move order, he has a chance to check for op fire. So that's pretty cool. So covers a lot of the situations. I haven't run into one that it hasn't covered. All right, so these tokens are now set up to the, at the beginning. And now you need to start at the beginning here. So if you look at the board here, um, you'll see on the orders track, it's got an A, an R, and a D. And then here's a blue space. If they're playing as France, they would, the AI would start in that position. Uh, if they're attack, recon, they start in the two plus position. And if they're defending, they'll start in the D, the D position. So we're just gonna place a marker here because that's the starting position for the uh, orders check. And then the same thing over here on the action check. This is the top, but when it starts the game, again, we have recon, defend, and we have attack. So we're gonna put one of these markers here on the attack space since they're the attacker. And that's where it starts. 
and then it'll process uh, through the game and I'll show you that uh, in a little more detail here. So then playing the game at this point is really simple. So um, in the game that I'm about to play, the uh, the uh, German side that the AI is going to be is a tagger and they have a hand size of six and in this scenario they can play up to six orders. When you set up you take the lesser of those two so in this case it's the same they can play six orders they can have six cards. Um, if, if, if it were that they had four orders and it's a hand of six cards you would only draw four cards. So you pick the lesser of the, of the two numbers. And I'm going to start that out by drawing the six cards. And I haven't shuffled this. Normally you would shuffle these back in, but just for this demo, we're going to pretend that they're there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you, you don't look at them as the player. So that's their hand when they're ready to go. So when it's the AI's turn, now you take your turn as normal. Just everything you want to do. The only thing you need to check is the triggers that can happen here. If you do a certain thing and you'll get to know these and know when to check. So if you play a fire order, and these conditions may met, they may, they may have a concealment card, um, so on and so forth. So then um, the others, if I discard, if, they, if you, the player discards due to passing, they have a chance of playing demolitions or hidden unit. If there's a melee, they have a chance of finding an ambush card. Uh, if they win a melee, then they can play no quarter. Uh, only if the bot is Germany and the opponent is Russia, so in this case that will be uh, available. If a friendly squad would break, you check to see if they have a light wounds card, just like you, the player, would have. When a time event happens, you're going to check to see if they can have a dig-in card. And that's when you'll show, you'll actually reshuffle the action deck at that point. So the action deck is this one here, to determine if, if they get any of these. So it doesn't eat up these and cause triggers. These are what's used to determine if they get an action. So if this runs out, you'd reshuffle it. And it doesn't, it doesn't cause a time event. But... Uh, you would reshuffle them if they get to play a dig-in card. Um, if, if the bot plays a special move order, so that's these here, those are special move, special fire, then you check for these items here based on what's available. And you get to choose. If there's multiples, you can choose which one they try for. So anyway, so that's going to go there. So now it's the <clears throat> I've done my turn. So let's say it's the AI's turn. So we flip their first card. And we look at this, and this number, you ignore the triggers, because remember, you're playing, they're playing it from hand. So this card is a 6 and a 6. So you take the white die, and you look at this number on the orders check. This says it's a 2. 2 or greater, they get to play an order. So it's a 6, it's greater than 2, they're going to play an order. You move that forward for the next, next card. Now, the second number, the brown number, the dark shaded number, is a 6. So that tells you which of these four tracks are going to move and take an action, take the next action. So it's not the action they're on, it's the action it goes to. So in this case, they're going to move this up forward, and that's a fire with action. When it says the bot plays a special fire order or has a token on a special fire order during an op fire. Okay, so if they get to take... If they, if they succeed at an op fire during one of your move orders and they succeed at that and they're playing an op fire, then you check for this if any of these tokens are sitting on a special. Okay? But we're not there. We're just, they're playing a fire token. Special fire order. So we get to choose this and boar sighting is only if they're the scenario defender. But they have the option here of, if these are the, this column here is the requirements that must be met for them to be able to use this one. And so in this case, op fire, they're not doing uh, the targets adjacent, boxed range, they can use spray fire. So if the attacking unit you've picked has box range, if they're firing a machine gun or a mortar, or if the bot is Germany or Britain, right? So the first thing we have to do is we have this action track here. Same, same concept as this. This means on a two plus, on this, he will try to take that action. So the first thing you do is you draw one of these cards for the action track. It's always for action. Draw that, and he got a 2. So we got a 2, and we need a 2+, plus. so he will get the action. When you successfully um, check to see if you've gotten an action on this at this stage, then you're going to take this and move it back to the start of the track. 
So that's now settled. You've used, you've used one, now it goes back and starts working its way down. If you don't qualify for an action, this starts dropping. Every time you try for an action and don't, this starts dropping until it's successful, then it goes back to the top. Now, in, mo in most cases, this, this uh, dark numeral six would be applied on this chart in the second, in this column. So let's say I had played a fire order, he drew that, then the six would mean he would try to put down a hidden pillbox if he's the scenario defender. <clears throat> that second number tells you which of these actions you can select. If I discard due to passing, then he would try to do a demolitions. There's no requirement. And so then he gets to check to see if he actually gets it. So this is what he's, this tells you what he's going to try for. So in this case you choose, so let's say we pick um, spray fire for box range. Okay, we'll say that. So then you draw, so that says to get, there's no, there's no number here, so we get to choose. So we pick that one. And so they need a four or greater for that to succeed. So we draw a new card and look only at the white die. And in this case, we got a four. So he will do this attack with spray fire because the unit I picked had box range and he's gonna do that and that's gonna add that bonus to the fire attack. And then it keeps and then okay, so that's that action resolved. You do it at that point, you do everything as normal. You, you uh, calculate your firepower, you add your die roll, you deal with triggers, you deal with events, you deal with everything that happens just like you would as a normal player from this deck. This is their, this is their fate deck. This is just to determine if they get actions. You play through that turn, or through that action. Now that one's done. Discard it. Because you want to you do the same thing just like for a time trigger. You want those to be there ready to go and you go to the next you go to the next action. So we're going to flip this one. He's still at 2+. Plus. And on this one, you got a 4. So that means he does succeed at getting an action. And the dark die is 2. So we're going to take 2 and slide it over. And that's a move. It's a regular move. So you'll then activate units for the AI to move. You know, as many as you can based on leadership or whatever. And then you move them as normal. In which case you, as the player, can do Opportunity Fire if you like. Now we go to the next turn. Now what's neat is, <clears throat> just like a real player, if you have six cards in your hand, the likelihood that you're going to get to play one order is pretty good. The likelihood you're going to get to play two orders is pretty good. It starts getting harder and harder because you're going to end up with all those junk cards sometimes in your hand. So this simulates that very well by making it harder and harder as you're as you play more cards. So we're now at a three. So we've, we're going to our third, third action. And you draw the card. And now in this case, it's a two. So we needed a three to do an action. And we failed it. So at this point, the AI's turn is over. This card gets discarded like normal. This gets reset back to the start for its posture. So it's back to attack. So when it starts its next hand, this will be where it needs to be to start it off fairly. And none of these change, this doesn't change, and you're set to go. The only other difference is you draw your up to your hand size, so we need uh, three more cards because we've got three left. So going back up to 12, or back, going back up to six, two, three. So then you would do your turn. And I'm going to go one more round here um, and just show you again how it works. So we're at a two check, and we got a five. So we are going to advance that. He succeeded, and we're on track one. So here's here's something that's this is a great example here. So we got track one. So this is going to go here. We got artillery request. In the scenario I'm playing, neither side has artillery at the beginning. So that counts as he he was successful in getting a turn. So he's going to take another. He's going to try another card. But basically, this is a wasted wasted card. But to the AI's advantage, this now goes back one space. So it should make it easier for the next card to still be something that it can do. So I like that, I like that a lot. I like, I like it's, it's continually improving and growing and changing as the scenario plays out. So now we go to the next card. This, we still need a two. 
And in this case, it's a five, so we're successful. So this now moves forward again, and we're on track five. And we move that forward, and it is a fire special fire order. So again, the same thing is going to happen here. Is uh, let's say we are going to we're firing a machine gun this time. Okay, so we'll try for sustained fire. We picked our target. We're firing a machine gun. So do we get it? First thing we need to check. This is set to a six plus, so we've got to get a six in order to gain this. So we draw from the action deck and we got a one. So he did not successfully get to an action card. So that goes there and this drops now because this check failed. If this check fails, this goes down. If this check succeeds, this goes back to the top. It's a very, very workable system. And it spreads out having the action cards. So you're not always having action cards available, but there's always a chance you can get a six, okay? So no action, so you carry out the fire order uh, as per normal. And we'll go to the next card. Discard that one. And now we need a two, and we're at two. I mean, excuse me, we've got a two, and we're at two plus, so we're successful. And then we are, uh, track two is gonna move forward. We're gonna do a, just a basic fire. So we do the basic fire order. And then we go to the next. I think I've covered everything. I'm gonna just go ahead and finish this, this hand off. All right, so we need a six, we need a three or greater, we got a six, so we again got another card we could play, and this is gonna activate track four, marker four. Marker four is gonna move, it's gonna get a move special. So we get to try for an action again. The bot plays a move order, right? Here are the options that can be done. You got an assault fire or smoke grenades. So the first thing we do is we're gonna draw to see if he gets it. We need a five or greater, and he's got a five. So it's successful. And the dark number is a one. So we check the chart here and that says, you're gonna try for smoke grenades. There is no requirement. So he will get smoke grenades if he passes the test. So we draw another card. Um, this was successful. So remember we move that back to the top now. And now we're gonna draw a card and try for the smoke grenades, which is uh, right here, five or greater, or four of the USA. I believe that's because the USA has more smoke grenade action cards. So it's just kind of balanced out there based on the nationality. So looking at the white die, we got a two and they did not get the smoke grenades. But remember this only drops if the action check fails, not the target roll, only the action check. The action check succeeded, which allowed us to go to this step. So this reset. And so you carry out the fire order, that's done, whoops. back and we'll try for another one so now we're at three plus again and this time it's a two so he did not get an order this time and so that resets that goes ahead and discard since you've seen it we're down to one card so we draw five more two three four five and then once again you are ready for the next turn so that is, uh, in a nutshell, how you play it. Again, like I said, you still have to make some decisions on the board. It's not 100% pure, but, but it does mitigate the main complaint people had about playing uh, Combat Commander Solo, in that you don't have to, um, uh, you don't have to manage the hand of cards anymore. A lot of times you don't, what, what, they, what this card actually is is irrelevant. This is going to determine the orders that they get. Um, so it's, you know, it's not going to be 100% equivalent to what, you know, the distribution in the deck, but it's still going to present a pretty, pretty balanced uh, opponent, especially based on the posture and the actions that they're going to take. Uh, it's a nice spread. It's very, I found it to be very easy to run, very easy to implement, and very challenging to play against, just like, just like any game of Combat Commander. What I had in my hand uh, really dictated what I was able to do. Um, and then what the AI was able to do was, seemed pretty realistic. It didn't seem like they were just constantly perpetually firing, you know, or always getting op fire or whatever. The, the intelligence behind the sliding scale on the action track and the orders check uh, is just really perfect. I mean, I, th I think there may be some tweaking that gets done along the way, but for most cases that I've seen so far, it's got everything pretty much covered. Um, 
So that's it. I just, I, I wanted to share this because I know there's a lot of fans of Combat Commander and I know there's a lot of people who, um, while we're still going through COVID panic and everything like that, there's still a lot of people that, uh, even though it's settling down, who still aren't getting back together and, you know, may want to play solo, you know. Um, and this gives you a, a really good opportunity to do it. Um, you've got the, you've always got an extra deck around, even if you have this the base game, you've got three decks. Um, it's really easy to run. Um, the only questions I have, and if James sees this, he can probably answer them, since, as you all know, I'm not allowed to post on BGG anymore, um, would be, uh, does this shuffle action deck, does this, do you always shuffle even if you don't make it, or I've only been shuffling if they get a dig-in card, so I'm not sure about that. And then I think I saw someone mention somewhere where, uh, if something happens, you discard a card. Like, if they get uh, an action during... If they, if, they, if they qualify for an action, just like you would play a card from your hand to play the action, do you discard one of these from their hand to indicate the loss of cards? Uh, and that does make sense, but I can't find that written in the documentation anywhere. I think I, I, think I saw it somewhere, or someone mentioned it, or I imagined it. Um, but anyway, James, if you're seeing this, you can comment uh, or shoot me an email. Uh, I would love to know. But again, it's a great system, very easy to implement. All you need is to print out a few, a couple of sheets and uh, one page rules. And hopefully these get cleaned up a little bit better. And then you can just get to gaming. Oh my gosh, it's a blast. So we'll see how it does handling a very, very large uh, counter-dense scenario. And I'm really looking forward to it. So anyway, thanks for sticking through this. I appreciate you watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!